time to put on makeup. It's time to light the lights. It's time to fuck some shit up with the Muppets here tonight. But this ain't the Muppets, people. And not in the porno way. This is the Happy Time Murders. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that no one probably ever thought they were going to see. So, about 10 years ago, Brian Henson was approached with an idea. Some, well, someone was approached with an idea to, yeah, which inevitably became this movie. The idea was simple, a raunchy R-rated puppet movie. And that idea flowered into a buddy cop movie all, somewhat a la Roger Rabbit. Somewhere along the line, Brian Henson got involved. Somewhere along the line, line, they've gone through about three different distributors and production companies, but they finally made it here. You're probably wondering, how can Brian Henson, a guy who is currently running Jim Henson, be, be doing this without, Disney's, without Disney being involved? Well, that's because Disney only owns the Muppets. So they're not. Um, so it ain't a Muppet movie. This is a, a new movie from the Henson Alternative branch of Jim Henson Productions. In what will be the first and probably only movie they ever produce. We'll see how things go, but ultimately, it's not looking great so far. Yeah. So the Happy Time Murders. What do we got here? We got. We've got a star-studded cast of such cast members as Elizabeth Banks, Melissa McCarthy. Dorothy, Joel McHale. We have veteran Muppet performers. Most notably, Kevin Clash, the original voice of Elmo. Well, not the original voice of Elmo, but the most recognizable voice of Elmo. Yeah. So, so he's in. The, so he's in this. Yes. yes but he's not playing a major character, so it's he's not playing a major character, and he's not playing. And he's not. Pl and God help us if it sounds anything like Elmo, because. Like, it's already weird enough knowing that he played Splinter in the first two, te in all those Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movies. And also there was that reason why he's no longer Elmo on Sesame Street. Which we're not going to go into because it's long, complicated, and mm -hmm. goes into a bunch of different directions. But we also have, but we have a bunch of, but a bunch of the performers are also veteran Muppeteers because, because of course Brian Henson's worked with all of the Muppeteers. He was been a... Um, he's been a perform. He has been part of the Muppets cast since he was a kid, since he was a teenager working on um, the Muppet movies. And that eventually led to him directing Muppets Tonight, episodes of Muppets Tonight, Muppet Treasure Island, Muppet Christmas Carol. This man, this is not his first outing with crazy puppet antics. An R-rated Muppet, and uh, Jason Siegel's openly stated in interviews that the Muppets got a little raunchy, that the Muppet performers would stay in character and get a slightly more raunchy when it came time to making, when the cameras were not rolling on Muppet films. And that's obviously something that, it obviously happens, has probably happened since the beginning of the Muppets where it gets raunchy when the cameras aren't rolling, where they're just goofing around. And obviously that was a huge influence when the Muppets finally got their own TV show, well, well, oh, like two, oh, two years ago. That, well, not finally, but they when they got there, when they got their mockumentary TV show two years ago, that uh, got canceled after one season. Yeah. Oh well. Oh well. <laughs> but obviously they're going a little harder. It's hard to say how uh, Jim would probably interpret this movie. But because on, on one hand he what, he was always an experimental filmmaker. On the other, who never wanted to be typecast or asked into this. Um, kids entertainment thing at this other hand he was a guy who if he had said the phrase god damn it it was a very strange occurrence so either way it's all it's all right as for what we're expecting out of this movie just just push some just push some boundaries but look it look we know we knew pretty, this movie was hotly anticipated before they even put out a trailer and then the trailer came out three months ago yeah. So that's already kind of a bad sign. Nobody saw, had a good look at this movie until three months ago. We didn't see set photos. All we got was a concept of, was concept art of the uh, de, of the main char puppet character, Phil Phillips, which, by the way, he's a real guy. There are like at least two other guys named Phil Phillips, so... Actually, three. There are three other guys named Phil Phillips, and at least two of them have Wikipedia pages. Yeah. So, you know, that's a thing. But anyway... We didn't get a lot of this. We've gotten a, there's news that's come out. A lot of stuff happened. Like Melissa, 
like when Melissa McCarthy came on, her character was originally a man. They changed it to suit Melissa. Her and Ben Falcone are producers on the film, as well her husband, Ben Falcone, as well as they did uncredited rewrites on the script. Which I hope makes it turn out better than Tammy, which we've seen some of it. There's definitely a few little jokes, but I don't think that was worth stretching it out to a feature length movie. Yeah. It's probably a good sketch character, but not a good movie. Yeah. This is, um, but one thing this movie has going for it is it's 90 minutes long, so it's probably not gonna be overly long and drawn out. And while we've seen that critics have kind of hammered it, a lot of other people have said that they found it charming and fun, charming and at least a little bit funny. So hopefully we'll get some, we will get some of that. But then again, we're the guys who like everything. Yeah, we're a little too optimistic when it comes to criticism on YouTube. And we even get, and we even tend to give most things good reviews and then think about it later and be like, actually that movie really sucked. Like most recently, Skyscraper. Actually, we, actually, skyscraper. We've never, we haven't thought about. We haven't really thought about since. We didn't really give it much thought. We just got what we wanted. We got what we paid for. Jurassic World. We still stand by our Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom review. It got, although it got more substantially worse the more last time went on. The more we thought about it, and we were pretty, and we were pretty, and we pretty much hammered that one. So anyway. I think that's all we have to say because we have gone on like six different tangents since this whole thing started. Yeah. So we will see you guys after the joke. Yep. So it's a little bit better than I expected. I enjoyed that quite a bit more than I thought I would, but it probably isn't worth 29% around tomatoes. Yeah. I mean, it's, I mean, we're not talking a golden movie here, but it's, but it's still pretty fun. Yeah, it was still a kind of enjoyable time. So let's talk about it. This movie's basically bright spots better because it actually knows how to flesh out its world. Yeah. Like it doesn't use actual references. Like, like no one is taking their shark-looking ass back home to Fiona. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, because that makes sense. Because that makes sense. Like they're just gonna jam Charlie Mc a random Charlie McCarthy reference in there somewhere. Or, no, they're I just. I mean, they didn't focus. They didn't really focus on history. Which is on history with the world building. They just kind of, puppets exist. That's it. It's basically the same setup as Roger Rabbit. In fact, it's also basically the same setup for every Muppet movie, except for the fact that, mu that puppets in this world are racial, are stand-ins for any discriminated class. They're a second-class citizen. They're a racist allegory. It's very apparent, but also at the same time, this is kind of a utopian society for the most part because of the fact that puppets are second-class citizens, sadly. Yeah, it's because of, because as they state straight up, because of because everybody doesn't like puppets, puppets, everybody kind of gets along. By the way, we're gonna say the word puppet a lot, so get used to that, sorry. Not sorry. So, let's talk a bit about the movie. Melissa McCarthy is really funny in this because if there's one thing you can count on Melissa McCarthy to be, to do, it's be extremely funny in a comedy where she's allowed to riff and stuff like that and you can tell that she there was a lot of freedom for her to riff in this. Bill Beretta as Phil was very funny. Yes, he's a veteran Muppet performer, the only other person besides Jim Henson himself to play to voice Rolf the dog. Yes. So to have him in there and play and play well off Melissa McCarthy, the chemistry between these two characters works with Phil Phillips and Phillips and Melissa McCarthy's character. Yeah. We also have Maya Rudolph as Bubbles, who appears a lot more in this than I thought she would. Yeah, you kind of, from the trailers, you kind of figure she's just going to be the stereotype. She's only there to kind of fill the shoes, uh, the fact that, well, he's a PI, so he's going to need a secretary, so let's throw a little funny secretary in there. But she throw, shows up a lot more than you'd expect. Yeah. We have Joe McHale kind of doing his thing. And we know his thing because we've seen him do stand-up and the first words out of his mouth when we saw him do stand-up was, I'm a dick. Yeah, so he knows exactly where his acting range is and he does it perfectly every time. By the way, hilarious and hilarious at stand-up. It sucks that the Joel McHale show got canceled, but just a tangent, just a little quick tangent. Anyway, also also in there, <laughs> but we've also got, but we've got lots of Puppet, perfor puppet performers in this movie that have 
movie that they do a who do, who do great jobs. One of the last things you see during the credits is a behind the scene is a behind the scenes footage of all the work that it took to make this. And they, and for the record, you you wouldn't expect it, but they rely a lot on CGI to make the puppets appear to be walking. That is probably my favorite. That's probably my favorite part of any Muppet of a, watching the behind the scenes of a lot of the Muppet stuff is seeing the puppeteering. That's my favorite because I love seeing how things come together. And I love when, and that's one thing I love about puppetry, puppetry is that it's actually there. I love practical effects, so having puppets, I just love the idea of it. And the, and yeah, the no, and yeah, there are some times where the novelty of a puppet saying fuck does kind of wear off, but the, you're, but in a lot of ways, the story is one of the more engrossing things of this movie. I was very invested in the story. I found this kind of story for the most part the mystery the characters all that kind of comes together to make some kind to make some kind of work to make it something good out of this it's not it's not perfect it's very a lot of there's a they throw in the usual cop move the usual cliches of this kind of thing it's a basically it's a cliche cop movie there's the it's a whole whodunit you on it for a while they get there's the usual you're off the four horse thing or scene in the third act there's a or heard act, there's all the kinds of stuff that kind of goes into place to make this whole thing. Ultimately, it's, I laughed a lot. I got a degree of enjoyment. And when it was working, I really enjoyed the gimmick of puppets doing this, uh, this being a movie with puppets. And in the end, and in the end, there's a lot to go with. with. There's, a, it's more than just raunchy, a raunchy puppet comedy. comedy. Okay, it's, okay, basically it is a raunchy, it's nothing but that, but they do it well enough. It's not, I mean, it's, it's not perfect. I mean, I think I like it a little more than, so I think I like it a little more than Sausage Party. Yeah, I think I like it a little more than Sausage Party too, but I don't know about, but it's gonna be a, we'll see what happens when it comes out on Blu-ray if I'm tempted to buy it, because rewatchability, because right now this, it seems like the thing that could hurt this is rewatchability. Yeah, Sausage Party was another one of those movies where it was essentially the gimmick where when the gimmick wears off, it's kind of, it kind of makes you wonder, do I want to watch this again? We have not seen Sausage Party again since we first saw it. Uh, yeah, so it's going to be an interesting thing to see if we actually want to see it again. I mean, it's decent. The movie's decent enough, and there are points where they kind of, and there are points where I think they're trying to hit the puppet. Cle the whole mu whole puppet movie cliche over the head. Like I, there was one point where I swear to God, they were her trying to make it feel like they were gonna break into a musical number, but then they just throw it off. I may be wrong, and they may have just been playing the cheesy music to accentuate the point, the to accentuate the fact that this is a cop movie cliche. But I don't know. I don't know. There was a. For the record, this is not. For the record, this is not a musical, so there is no original songs. Yeah. But there is a lot of licensed music, so you can kind of tell why they needed a lot of money to produce this. There was a lot of licensed music playing in the background. You will. It's. It's not new music. It's a lot of stuff from a couple of years ago. Like Call Me Maybe's in there for a little bit. Yeah. So. You get that. So you get that. But. Uh, and but you know it's. They, I mean, we could talk about the filmmaking practices all we want, but it's basic. But Brian Henson is a, but it's a Muppet movie, so that, but it's a movie created in just in such a way that it's, impo that it's imp that it's kind of hard to break it down because these movies are not made, you know, uh, are not made exactly like other movies because they you need to take into account a lot. Yeah. Honestly, I did enjoy this movie a lot, though. It's a very fun. It was a very enjoyable sit. The fact that it was 90 minutes actually did help. Although, my, one of my main problems is I wish we got more of the character, of the puppet characters, other than Phil. Yeah, it kind of felt, there, I mean, there was a whole stretch of, the, there was like a whole, maybe like eight minute stretch of the movie where there were, where no puppets showed up, where there were no puppets in it, and it was, in it, and I was like, this is a really long, there was a really long time in this movie where no puppets are showing up on screen. There's like, there's some puppets I wish that they've used very heavily in the advertising that I wish they could have done more with. Yeah, the, for a movie called The Happy Time Murders, the actual Happy Time gang is very much kind of an ap afterthought. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not saying I want, want more, I want a lot more of it, especially since this, there's, 
if you actually look on YouTube, there's a lot of supplementary material that the producers released. Is that is that actually shows one of the characters. In in fact, it actually shows some characters that don't even show up in the movie. Yeah. The movie, but the movie, but that's just little world building quirks that we do, that we you don't need in this movie. I almost wish this movie had the possibility of becoming successful, just so we could probably do like something else in this world. Like, I'm not saying I want a sequel. I'm just saying I would be interested in the idea of maybe like a TV show set in this universe or something like that. Well, I'm just thinking that if that depending on what goes on, we may or may not get an avid new Q movie for a little while. And I'll, which surprises me, they didn't jump right on that after Frozen. Yeah. Anyway, what? Anything else? I I can't think of anything. All right. So, I think we're done. Uh, Happy Time Murders is okay. It's not ground. It's kind of groundbreaking in the premise, but it's not like this incredible. Go out and see it. Support this big, this big amazing. You have to see it movie because it's so different and original. It's not going to change the world. It wasn't. It was okay. I liked it well enough. I had a lot of enjoyment to it. A little bit of it to. A little bit of the jokes were a little too much, and there was a bit of the, and the twist at the end kind of didn't pay. Off, and there was a little bit of a twist at the end that really didn't pay off for me. Yeah. So, anyway, be sure to like, favorite, subscribe to this channel, and don't forget to tune in next time when we. Um, didn't check what we were gonna see. Didn't check the movie we were gonna see next. So it looks like we're all gonna be a little surprised. Yep. Bye.